Hello, good morning. Welcome to Journeys. That's we're coming to you live from our studios in Kukum Limli. We're on DTT because we're free to on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. We are your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Coming up this morning, Special Prosecutor Kiseja have been facing impeachment. We have exclusive details plus a conversation on what this means to the fight against corruption. We are also live in Parliament for reactions as the House reconvenes at the behest of the majority to consider some urgent government business. Plus, pressure continues to mount on the Trade Ministry to reverse directive on cement price hikes as minority and greater call for dialogue on production costs. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. We're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and YouTube. And X Spaces at Journeys on TV. My personal handle is at Denana Aisha. Please do stay for details. Join us this learning a petition seeking to remove Kisia Jabing as special prosecutor has been forwarded by President Ekofuado to the Chief Justice. The petition dated April 30, 2024 was sent to the President by former special prosecutor Mr. Martin Amidu and conveying to Justice Getru Tokono on May 6, 2024. Samuel Mbura of our political desk joins me, in, uh, joins me via Zoom with more on this. Mbura, what more do we know? Well, Aisha, the petitioner, Martin Amidu is alleging procurement breaches in the purchase of vehicles by the OSP, abuse of judges and the administration of justice, violation of citizens' rights through arrest and detentions. He is also alleging the violation of citizens' rights to information as well as appointment of personnel to the office. What we are gathering is that, as required by Article 146 of the Constitution, the Chief Justice is in the process of deciding if there is a prima facie case to set up a committee to impeach Mr. Ejabin. So the role of the Chief Justice here is to set up, the first of all, establish uh, whether there, there are facts as alleged by Martin Amido, and after that, the committee will now start the probe into it. Has this got anything to do with that explosive press conference by the special prosecutor at which he alleged that judges had ganged up against him? Per our sources, yes, it does. Amido is... For instance, alleging that the special prosecutor, by holding a press conference, uh, which we know uh, was done last year, to complain about the conduct of the judiciary amounts to abusing judges mm -hmm. and bringing the judiciary into disrepute. Uh, this impeachment process comes after earlier reports that the special prosecutor had declined demands to resign and rather held a press conference to complain about his frustration in doing his work, where we know he made several revelations and even gave. Uh, warnings that if we don't take time, some criminals in the country will wake up one day to seek an injunction from uh, to prevent them from doing their work. So Mr. Amidu also says, by arresting persons such as Cecilia Dapa and Professor Fimpon Boatin, the special prosecutor abused their rights. He finally alleges a violation of citizens' rights to information when he himself requested for appointment letters and salaries of all the staff of OSP to be put on a pen drive for him, as well as appointment of personnel to the office. According to him, this was denied. That's Samuel Mbura with our political desk with uh, the details of the petition to the Chief Justice. Now, in a related development, um, <coughs> in a related development, a former Auditor General Daniel Yodomilevu has petitioned Parliament seeking a bipartisan probe into the conduct of the Economic and Organized Crime Office and its failure to prove the controversial stash of money found in the residence of former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Dapa. The petitioners, which include lawyer Martin Kwebu, security analyst Dr. Adam Bona, political science professor Ransford Jampo, and over 100 other Ghanaians, argue that Yoko had more than enough basis to investigate the former minister for money laundering as she has been inconsistent and unable to provide the source of the huge amounts of money seized at her residence by the office of the special prosecutor. Well, I've been joined by Martin Kwebu, uh, who is a member of the team that uh, petitioned Parliament on this. And Daniel Domelevo has also been speaking on the AM show 
uh, a while ago on how he feels about this petition. Listen. We can listen to Daniel Domelevu, who spoke on the AM show a while ago on the um, petition to impeach the uh, special prosecutor. Selectiveness, the selectivity in using this procurement law is becoming one too many for my liking. Several huge procurement offenses are known and are, uh, to all of us and are not being addressed, but they pick on individuals who they think uh, they should pick on and they talk about procurement offenses. I'm not saying that that justifies the procurement offense if there is any. But uh, I think, uh, well, let's see how it pans out. I, I have not seen the details of, of the petition. I've only heard of the petition. So it's very difficult for me to go into the merit of uh, the, the cases. I am wow. very sure that the Chief Justice will do the needful and uh, we will know what the, the, the outcome will be later. Um, let me come back to you briefly, Adam, before I go. Martin Pebu has joined me again. Martin Pebu, earlier I asked you what you make of this petition to the Chief Justice to, to impeach the special prosecutor. Hello, kindly unmute for me, Mr. Pebu. Right, whilst we try to get that fixed, let's go to Parliament where members of Parliament have been reacting to this issue. Remember that the House was reconvened at the behest of the majority uh, to consider some urgent business in the House. Kwekwa Sante is standing by with some reaction. Kwekwa Sante, how are the MPs been, how have they been reacting to this latest development? Right, we'll take another break on Joy News Desk. We'll be back with more. Kwekwa Sante has joined us now from Parliament. Kwekwa Sante, how have the MPs been reacting to this latest development? Not so many of them have started speaking in terms of what exactly they make of this latest development that the former special prosecutor, Kisi Ajibin, uh, the former special prosecutor, Martin Amidi, seeking the removal of um, Kisi Ajibin. A lot of them that are speaking of the record say this is coming to them as a bit shocking. And some of them too cannot say that this is a political move because they know that Martin Alamisi Amidu is belonging to the NDC and so given also his track record is not someone that the, 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 the president or persons within the MPP can use sparingly to push a certain agenda. So it's quite of a mixed reaction. A number of MPP MPs haven't quite come up to the floor yet because we understand there are some caucus meetings going on before sittings will start because of the key crucial business that the House is said to consider today in terms of the ministerial nominees and other business that the majority is asking Parliament to do. But if you come to Parliament, a lot of people are receiving this news with, with shock that the former special prosecutor is seeking to remove the current special prosecutor on the grounds of uh, procurement breaches among others. There are those who also tell me that the reasons are at best flimsy. They do not believe that enough reasons have been adduced by the special prosecutor, by the former special prosecutor, to get the chief justice to make a finding of a prima facie case against um, um, against the current special prosecutor. So. Was, as the days go back, the, the, the day goes on, we expect that we are going to get more MPs to speak to this really vexed matter, important issue that is generating some quite of a controversy, even as Parliament itself come in to, to deal with, with, with this issue. So Aisha, what I can say is that it's a bit of a mixed reaction, but even before we can get MPs to go on the record, we expect that this will go down on a political divide. A lot more NDC MPs are going to say this is probably a witch hunt to get um, Kisi Ajibin out before the 2024 election. While well, MPP MPs believe that this must take its course, and the Chief Justice, if she makes a determination that a prima facie case has been made against Kisi Ajibin, then that committee can get into it and make these findings public. Well, how um, the House was actually reconvened today 
to uh, consider some urgent government business. Has it started yet? Sitting hasn't started yet. In fact, a number of NDC, MP, M, uh, NDC MPs have just come in. The minority leader himself and uh, other members have just walked in. When you look at the NPP side, only about three of them are here, including the first deputy speaker, Joseph Oseusu. So a number of them now come in. And we expect that any moment from now, the Speaker of Parliament himself, Avan Bagwin, we expect that he himself will preside over the House today. He will get in and then govern the House in the session. Three key business that a majority expects that Parliament can conduct today on this special and emergency sitting. It's only today that Parliament will sit. They will go back to continue their break until the Speaker of Parliament issue new summons recalling MPs to, to be back in Parliament, particularly having to do with the approval of ministerial nominees, approval of tax waivers and a $150 million loan. That is on the agenda. We also expect that today, the newly elected member of parliament for a just so lawyer, Kwabna Boateng, will also be sworn in and a number of these issues can come up. And of course, uh, that's Kwekwa Sante in parliament uh, where they are supposed to be sitting this morning to consider some urgent business. We'll definitely take you back to parliament when all of this unfolds and we'll bring you all the updates. Let's get on to other stories. The cement manufacturers are on a war path with the trade minister, Kobnatayo Hammond, serving a strong notice they will not comply with the ministry's directive to immediately reverse recent increase in cement prices. In a statement, the ministry said, this directive is to check arbitrary increases in cement prices. But Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Cement Manufacturers, Dr. George Dawson Amwa, says the minister's directive lacks the basis for them to accept it. It came as a, as a surprise, as something that we never expected. Come to think of the relationship that we've built with the Ministry of Trade and Industry. I will say to an authority that the cement industry will be, I think, if not the only industry or one of the industries that have established a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Trade and Industry because of the sensitivity of the product, because of how economically the product is being, you know, seen in the country. You're talking about cement, and you're talking about the, the use of cement, infrastructure, buildings, blah, 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 blah. That's, they put it that way. So we established that relationship. And one of the key areas for this memorandum of understanding is to judge all so that we really look into what goes into cement production in terms of cost. So that at least at the ending point in time, you know, the cement prices will be stabilized. Among other things, just to ensure there's fairness in the competition. Now, you know, there is actually tense competition because there are a lot of manufacturers. And again, the sensitivity of this product in terms of quality we should ensure that the quality is always actually complied with because when, when you're producing substandard uh, uh, cement, you know the consequences, collapse of buildings. So, I mean, all these put together, we've really established a very good relationship with the Ministry of Trade and Industry. So on this, it comes as a shock because of price that, hey, these people have increased their price. The first approach out, I really think the best approach that the minister should have done was to call us for a meeting. The CEO of the Association of Ghana Industry, Sechu Makwaba, charged the ministry to dialogue with the cement manufacturers to determine whether there is a justification for the price hike instead of issuing a blanket directive. I think what will happen is that the ministry should have a, a discussion with the cement manufacturers. Firstly, there is a technical committee that even looks at the cement manufacturing prices. So we can discuss this at that level and then analyze to see the increase that has come about as a result of the CD depreciation and other factors in the market. And when that analysis is done, we will see whether there's a justification for interest or not. So I think that that is what should happen and then we'll subsequently come back to the public and let you know whether the price to be maintained, increase the data or come down. For us, we are neutral because we appreciate the concern when prices are going up. It affects the citizen, it affects everybody. But we are also mindful that we also have to protect the company so that they can keep their job for us. So let's look at it from that angle, meet the minister, and then we'll discuss the details of the, the reason behind it and whether it's justified or not. But the concern is, is there really a mechanism in place as we speak to regulate how these prices are set? Or it just happens when you feel that the dollar has gone up or the prices are affected 
affecting the manufacturing, it just goes up. I don't think that any manufacturer suddenly increases prices because one cost item has gone up. No manufacturer does that. But if you do so, then you will be out of business because you have other competing uh, 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 products all the time. So every either you have a direct of it or indirect of it. So normally what happens is that they look at it over a period. If the, if the depreciation or whatever cost is consistent over a long period and then it gets to a point where you cannot recover with your current price there, adjust overnight because there has been increase in a particular cost item. Normally it's not done. More well, cement retailers have begun adjusting the price of cement on the market today. They spoke with Joy News' Estan Kormer. The prices of cement has surged drastically, prompting the Minister for Trades and Industry to urge cement manufacturing organizations to reduce their prices. We've been to several shops here in Accra to interact with traders as to why the price of the cement keeps increasing. I spoke to a particular trader who said that he had to increase his price by 10 cities just this morning. So the cement he used to sell for 82 cities is now selling for 92 cities. I spoke to another trader who says that she's been forced to increase her price to 105 cities. They complain that customers do not come to buy their product like they used to. And some of them have attributed the increase in the price of cement to the decline in the value of the city. From Accra, Esther A.C. Nkrumah. Well, let's revisit the petition to the uh, Chief Justice to remove or impeach the special prosecutor, Kisei Jabing. And uh, Martin Kwebu has joined us again. Mr. Kwebu, uh, we lost you a while ago when you were making that point about how, how all of this come across to you. Yes. So, Aisha, I made the point that, that the case is going to hang like a cloud on the Office of Special Prosecutor. So, in the short term, the office will suffer some reputational crisis. But long term, we hope that Kisi Jabin comes out uh, innocent. Or uh, maybe it's possible he may even decide to resign because you can see quite clearly that uh this 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 petition it has all the writings of the president on it i'm telling you that the president kufuado uh, supports this petition i say so because you see jane mensa who is in office now there's been a petition or several petitions against her president kufuado never forwarded those petitions yes madam jane mensa the electoral commissioner there have been petitions for her removal similar to this one Yet, President Kufado, under Article 146, Clause 3, did not forward those petitions. Similarly, there were petitions for removals of certain past chief justices. President Kufado never forwarded those. But look at this Kisi Jabin one. He has quickly done it. So it's very clear that this is the handiwork of President Kufado. This petition is the handiwork of President Kufado. He's just solidly behind it and driving it all the way through. Why? Because Kisie Jabin has shown some independence. That is too much for President Kufuado to bear. You see, he's shown a bit of steel, a bit of bone. Well, too much for President Kufuado. So he wants Kisie Jabin removed so that he will get a very malleable person into the office. Because, you know, President Kufuado will be out of office in about seven months. I am preparing to petition a, a, against him corruption and corruption related offenses. Several other persons will be petitioning against President Kufuado. So he wants the kind of person that he can go to bed and sleep soundly, knowing that that person will have his back. But currently, Kisei Jabin doesn't fit that mold. He doesn't fit that part. He doesn't fit that part that this is somebody who would defend friend President Kufuado to death. No. And let's not forget, it's not as if I believe Kisei Jabin is an angel or he's gotten it all right. No. I am against uh, Kisei Jabin for letting off Charles Edubwahim, former uh, Minister of State and the Minister of Finance, and uh, listen, Alaji Mahmoud Baumia, uh, the MPP uh, 
presidential candidate and vice president. They were cited in the uh, this an analyzed video, the corruption case in which Edubahi collected forty thousand dollars and demanded two hundred thousand dollars for Baumia as appearance fee, and then they were to take what ten percent fee for getting the bank and uh, this um, getting a banking license for the sheik. You see, Kizia Jabin hurriedly finished investigations on it and closed that docket so that Baumia will be free to campaign. But that case is not dead. So my point is that notwithstanding the fact that I have a beef against Kisei Jabin for that Edubwahi and Baumia case, which he let them go, overall, Kisei is okay. Kisei is okay, even more than okay in our Ghanaian context. There are fewer people, or let's say there are few people like him. A lot of people can talk, but they don't have enough muscle. They don't have enough steel to be able to withstand the pressures of the executive. Don't forget, even Martin Amidu himself, he didn't come as far as Kisie Jabin in terms of the cases in court and the investigations. Amidu couldn't do as much as Kisie Jabin because he couldn't withstand President Kufado's interferences. But I see that Kisi has done quite a lot. So I believe that, yes, he's not an angel, but at least it's okay. He can, he, it's okay for now. He can handle this job. And so it is sad that uh, this petition has been filed against him. But let's see how it goes. Welcome back to Joy News Desk. We apologize for that break. And Mr. Akwebo, grateful for your patience. Um, you made the point that all of this uh, petition sends a signal and it looks like the handiwork of the president. Why do you say so? Yeah, so I mentioned that there have been several petitions in the past against uh, office holders who in order to remove them, you need to go through Article 146. But President Kufuado never presented those petitions. Number one, the publicly available one, is the one against Jim Mensa. Oliver Baka Vomawa presented a petition for the removal of Jim Mensa for this sale issue. That's a central fee, aqua food, lolobi, uh, the central additional areas. The failure of the EC to ensure that they vote in the 2020 uh, elections, right? Till date, President Kufado hasn't presented that petition. Contrary to Article 146, Clause 3 of the Constitution 1992. Yeah, because the Constitution is very clear, and maybe let me read, it helps to emphasize the point. It says that he should forward it. Samson Ladi Ayenini has this famous phrase for it. That the president is just a conveyor belt. So once it lands on his table, he has no discretion. He can't sit on it. He's just to forward it. Yet President Kufuado sat on the petition against Jim Mensah. Let's read the uh, provision. It says, if the president receives a petition for the removal of a justice of the, the superior court, other than the chief justice, or for the removal of the chairman of a regional tribunal, he shall refer the petition to the chief justice, who shall determine whether there is a prima facie case. Yes, you hear them say justice of the superior court, etc. But it also applies to the OSP. If you read the OSP Act, Act 959, it says that in order to remove him, you have to follow the procedure in Article 146. So although you don't see his name here, by the Act 959, he also enjoys this protection. Uh -huh. So back to the point. Apart from Jim Mensah, other uh, this, uh, previous ju uh, uh, justices of the Supreme Court, specifically previous CJs in this country, also there were petitions against those uh, CJs President Kufuado never presented those petitions. He sat on them. 
So how can Okisie Jabinso, he has quickly foiled it. It's very clear that he doesn't like Kisie Jabin anymore because Kisie Jabin appears far more independent than Ekufuadu anticipated. He thought Kisie Jabin would be totally malleable, but he's not getting that. He wants somebody who is very malleable and who would defend him, President Ekufuadu, to death. But Kisi doesn't fit that part. But, but so he wants to and see, uh, This petition, Mr. Kwebu, was sent in by um, Martin Kwebu, who left for Kisi Jabin to take over. And he's raised some issues there. You are not concerned about the issues he raised? Martin Amidu. Yes, Venerable Martin Amidu. But I'm telling you that that's the same way other petitions were presented to President Kufuadu. But because he liked the office holders, he didn't present the petitions, he sat on them. So once he has left Kisie Jabin's own, then it means he is a cheerleader. President Kufuado is a cheerleader for this petition. I'm telling you, Aisha, that's the only conclusion you can come to. Because President Kufuado cannot trust Kisie Jabin to defend here Kufuado for his corrupt deals when Kufuado leaves office. You know, I've mentioned it already. I'm preparing to present a petition to the OSP against Ekufuadu for several of his corrupt deals. You see how he padded the Ameri deal. $800 million. $800 million is what President Ekufuadu wanted to listen uh, to the Ameri, uh, Ameri deal. Why? Had it not been for the NDC who got wind of it and through their expertise made noise, President Ekufuadu would have had the $800 million. When he was asked about it, he said he was misled. He wasn't misled. He knew about that $800 million. Also, uh, you know, Manasseh did the documentary on the fumigations we did after the uh, COVID. The fumigations cost us over 500 million Ghana. When the assembly said they can do the fumigations themselves, if only the Ministry of Local Government would give them the chemicals. Yet President Kufado refused and insisted that the contract be given to Zoom Lion. So that is the story Manasseh did and won West Africa Journalist of the Year Award last year. So it's a good story I'll be using to petition against uh, uh, this President Kufado for corruption and corruption related offenses, right? Yes. So, and I'm sure other people are already showing teeth that they'll also be making complaints against President Kufado. So for this and other reasons, his other appointees, the ministers, etc., he sees that no, he still will not protect him as to the level that he uh, anticipated. Let's look so at the procedure. Let's let's look at the procedure, uh, Mr. Kwebu, Now that the petition has been forwarded to um, the CJ, what what then happens? What what is to be expected? Good. So now the CJ has to make what we call a prima facie case. She has to determine, Yassi Tokonu has to determine whether there's a prima facie case. So let's break it down further. It means that looking at the petition, she now would invite Kisie Jabin to answer the charges. Let's call them the charges or allegations in the petition. So when Kisie Jabin answers them, and then Yassi, um Tokonu as CJ sees that, hey, the answers don't exactly add up. They don't make the case totally frivolous. They don't make the case Amidu has brought um, useless. So meaning that a local to so say, if there is something that shows that there is substance in Amidu's allegations, notwithstanding the answer Kisie Jabin is given, then, uh, then the CJ will go ahead to set up a committee of five persons. Committee of five persons. Now, out of this committee of five, there will be uh, two persons appointed by the Judicial Council and then three appointed by the CJ. So that committee will be made up of five, okay? Five persons. Now, those five will go into the complaints, or let's say the petition. So that's where they will require Amidu to come and prove his case fully. And then Kisi will also answer fully. 
by the law, the same Article 146, the proceedings are supposed to be held in camera. So let's warn seriously, please, journalists, don't go and expose or try to bring out the petition itself or the proceedings in camera. If you do, there is a, a listen, you, you are going to face contempt of court because they say the proceedings will be in camera. It's a closed door. So nobody will get to know what is happening there until they finish and then they uh, come out with their recommendations. And, and, so in, and, and in this report, in, in this uh, committee sitting, uh, Kisia Jabin gets to be heard, right? Absolutely, yes. So that's why I even said, even the response that CJ will require from him, he will be heard. So he has the option to answer himself or to get a lawyer. Or even if not a lawyer, if it concerns any other field and he needs a journalist, he needs an engineer, he needs whatever other field that I see the procurement, etc. He can combine those people, lawyers, engineers, other professions. They can help him put together his defense. So if in the unlikely event that there's a prima facie case, when it goes to the substantive hearing, that's the full hearing, the one you call witnesses and all that, that one too, he has a right to be represented by a lawyer. You remember the one Samson Ladia Anyonini did against Madame Lorita uh, Vanderpoy, the former strike boss. Yes. You see how they did the proceedings, yeah. called witnesses, etc. And at the end of the day, she was found liable and then she was kicked out of office. Right. So the same way, Mm -hmm. well, well, uh, for the sake of time, let me wrap up by also finding out from you. You, yourself, uh, Daniel Domelevo, and uh, over 100 others have petitioned Parliament to probe uh, how Ioko dealt with the Cecilia Dapa case. What, what has been the outcome? Has Parliament responded to your petition? Not yet. Not yet because, you know, Parliament is on recess. But they've been recalled to come for today only. Or, yeah. So today yes. they have some special business. Yes. So we presented a petition yesterday in the afternoon. So we are hoping that since today Parliament will be sitting, the Speaker will come to office and he will see the petition. And then uh, hopefully they will, roll in, uh, they will roll out all the processes for admitting it. We beg Mr. Speaker to, to admit this petition because it will help us to hold Madam Tiwa Dodankwa Yoko and Godfrey Dami accountable. They are blatantly trying to just free Madame Cecilia Dapa in the thief of overwhelming evidence against her. So this bipartisan group would help extremely to bring uh, accountability. Grateful for your time. Martin Pebu is lawyer and he is one of the petitioners to Parliament to probe of Yoko and how it handled the Cecilia Dapa case. Let's take a break on Joy News Desk. When we're listen this morning, my name is Aisha Baim. Log on to myjohnline.com for more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. Do enjoy the rest of our programs.